Yeah. I'm always ready when it's game time. Hustle in my blood, I'ma make mines. Where I'm trying to go, it's gonna take time. You can earn your respect, I'ma take mine. In a lane of my own, I'm in a zone. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Going the Distance, where we share stories of faith, sports, and everything in between. To start the show off, I'd like to do a GTD spotlight on two men. First, University of Virginia head basketball coach Tony Bennett. Recently, during his contract revisions, Coach Bennett was offered a substantial raise, which is not a surprise when you consider he led Virginia to their first NCAA championship in school history. But what is surprising is that he declined the raise, stating that he and his wife, Laurel, had more than they needed. So he suggested that the money be reinvested into the basketball program and other athletic programs at the school. Such a great example of humility and contentment. I remember asking Coach Bennett about his coaching philosophy at the Final Four last season, and he said his program is built on five pillars. Humility, passion, unity, servanthood, and thankfulness. Now we're going to switch from college basketball to Major League Baseball. Recently, Hall of Famer New York Yankees pitcher Mariano Rivera was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Trump. The president stated, throughout Mariano's incredible career, he remained a humble man with a deep Christian faith. The Lord doesn't care about wealth or fame. The Lord cares about goodness and love in our hearts. End quote. And just to reiterate the level of character Mo has... Take a look at this clip from an interview I did just a few years ago. When you hear record for most career saves, 652. Five-time World Series champion, World Series MVP 1999. It just, the list just goes on. When you hear those stats, what do you think to yourself? See, Sean, th those things made nothing for me. I mean, may, those things made me better or less. See, I don't... I don't want people to recognize me for those things. I want people to recognize me for who I am. Humility, humility, humility. Tony Bennett and Mariano Rivera are great examples of what it means to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and allowing God to add all things unto them. We'll be right back after this. Come Give on, me that. <laughs> Bye. Ah, sure, life is busy, but I found a way to make a huge difference in people's lives. I guess you could say I'm changing the world right here from home. I bring medical supplies and doctors to people in need and dig wells so that villagers can have clean and safe water to drink. I make it possible to preach the gospel in over 100 countries, including right here in America. And when disaster strikes, I'm there providing food, thank you, and emergency supplies to give people hope again. Every day, CBN and I are making the world a better place. Here you go. <laughs> my life is hectic, so I join CBN through Pledge Express. My bank does all the work, and I know that my gift is being used where it's needed most. So become a CBN partner and join Pledge Express, because you can do a world of good right from where you are. Good morning. Are you ready to get started? The Transforming Word 3 was very inspirational. Hearing Pat's introduction to the reading of the Proverbs to set up the importance of Proverbs. It was like a fresh awakening. Take a journey through the book of Proverbs with Pat Robertson in the Transforming Word Volume 3. This recording is essential because it's the Word of God. When listening to an audio version, it takes an, on another dimension. It kind of settles your spirit to hear the things proclaimed as a stronger word. In this dynamic reading, you'll learn biblical principles for gaining wisdom, favor, and anointing. Everyone should listen to the CD because it has something for everyone. It can give you encouragement at any time in your life. Call now to get the Transforming Word, Volume 3. And as a special bonus, receive Pat's signature teaching, The Three Blessings. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. Welcome back. Our next story is about love and perseverance. Olympic high jumper Jamie Nieto had a very successful career while competing. 
After retiring from competition, his life took an unexpected turn that some would consider tragic. But Jamie is not most people. The book of Psalms tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. For two-time Olympic high jumper Jamie Nieto, it's a passage he marches to every day. In April of 2016, he suffered a back injury while trying to demonstrate a back flip he'd done hundreds of times. The injury caused paralysis from the chest down. That moment when I hurt myself, you know how they say like your, your life flashes before your eyes? It was kind of that thing, you know? And I just try to do my best just, just to, to, to keep praying and keep my mind on, on God and that he has a plan for me. In his prime, Jamie was America's best, able to leap over six feet with ease. And jump a personal best of seven feet, eight inches. That's over a foot taller than he is. But after the injury, he was a man once heralded for his athletic abilities, whose body lied dormant in a hospital bed. At the time, Jamie was dating two-time Olympian for the Jamaican team, Siobhan Stoddard, who was training for her third Olympics. And she dropped everything to be by Jamie's side. This was gonna be one of the biggest challenges that you know I've ever faced, and I know that he's ever faced, but it was a challenge that I knew, okay, God, because God doesn't give you anything that you can't face, that you can't handle. And if he put that on this plate, then I was gonna step to it. After surgery, the doctors predicted that Jamie would only regain 30% of his body function. Jamie and Siobhan refused to believe that prognosis. We wouldn't accept that and we're not accepting that. And we believe that God said, I'm gonna make 100% recovery. But how? Jamie could barely breathe, let alone start to walk. Everything that I did was work. Everything that I did, getting up, breathing, drinking, eating. I felt like I was gonna die. After lying in bed for two weeks, unable to move, Jamie began rehab. The doctor came in and he said, uh, or the therapist came in and he said, uh, okay, we're gonna stand up today. And in my mind, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I, you know, I don't know if I can stand up, you know, and, and, but outwardly and out of my mouth, I said, okay. <laughs> Siobhan sacrificed the rest of her Olympic career to walk with Jamie on this journey. She was going to make sure he saw it through. I was there to push Jamie, you know, just the athletes as we are, you know, as visualizing when I remember he tried to move his hands and he couldn't, that visualization and repetition and doing things over and over um, until we got you know, little by little, we kept making gains. Jamie and Siobhan are Olympians, a rare breed of competitors who understand that the keys to success begin with the foundation of faith and controlling your thoughts. I always say pole vaulters and high jumpers, we have to be the most confident on the track because in our mind, we have to believe that we can clear a bar that we've never cleared before, you know, and then go over there and do it. You know, so yeah, God has blessed me with that talent to be able to do that. And even now, like I said, you know, working with my uh, uh, abilities that I have right now, and as I was learning to walk in, again, I would visualize and I would see myself walking, and I still do that, see myself running, you know, and doing those things. And uh, I'm gonna keep doing that until they come to pass. After some time, Jamie and Siobhan got engaged and created a goal for Jamie to work towards. We created a goal that uh, I wanted to walk her down the aisle, you know, and I created that goal, but then she said, okay, well, it's going to take probably about 150 steps to get <laughs> out of the, uh, you know, uh, of the church. So I was like, okay, so I got to start working on my steps. And at this point in time, I was barely trying to take three steps, you know, falling, taking three steps, you know. Now with a goal to achieve, Jamie went to work. So I started working on it and those three steps after a couple months, turn into six steps, and those six steps turn into 12, and 12 turn into 25, and 50. At times when it was challenging, Jamie had thoughts of giving in to his body, but Siobhan was there to give him a kick in the pants. There were many times when, you know, say Jamie couldn't 
do something and he, I would see the frustration, him getting frustrated, and I'd tell him, stop. It, it's not gonna be easy. This is gonna be hard, remember that. And we push through. Next thing you know, I'm at 100, you know? And I was like, yo, I, I did 150 or something like that. She's like, okay, great, now you gotta do two, 206. And I was like, 206. <laughs> <laughs> then on July 22nd, 2017, Jamie had reached his goal. God is great, you know, I was able to go to my wedding and, and uh, walk my, my beautiful wife down the aisle, which was an emotional and, and beautiful time. Since that day, Jamie continues to improve, and he hasn't allowed his current limitations to slow him down. In fact, he's busier than ever, writing and acting for a couple of TV sitcoms. Siobhan has also been busy as a solo recording artist and recently released a single dedicated to Jamie. The name of the song, I wrote the song, it's called Through the Good and the Bad. It's just basically, you know, the lyrics as far as the verse, you know, it's through the years that we've had together. We built a love that would last. As Jamie continues to make strides, he and Siobhan are walking full of faith and purpose to shine God's light of hope in every way they can. I, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for God. I know that we would not have the strength I would not be strong enough to do what I do if it wasn't for the strength that I have in him that has placed in me so that I can be there for Jamie. Love conquers all. I believe that when you have love and when we act out of love and caring for others, then anything is possible, not just in our relationship, but also in the world. As long as you keep God first, anything can happen, you know? Uh, everything will happen within his way, so, and, and I would say that would be the best thing that anybody can do in their life, you know, and everything will work out. Wow. I love what Jamie and Siobhan said about controlling your thoughts. You know, too many times we talk ourselves out of the blessing God has in store for us, and that comes from how we're thinking. Consider what it says in Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Then in Proverbs 18.21 it says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. So whatever situation you may find yourself in, think and speak life into your situation, because yes, your words have power. And as you can see, in Jamie and Siobhan's life, it works. We'll be right back after this. As the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 930 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We are working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way. I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation.
unfailing wisdom. Find guidance to an anointed path and receive the blessings of God. CBN presents The Transforming Word, Volume 3, Proverbs, Verses of Wisdom, Favor, and Anointing. Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. Pat Robertson records this dynamic audio CD to guide and strengthen you. I walk in the way of righteousness, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me. Plus, as a special bonus, you'll receive a DVD of Pat's teaching, The Three Blessings. I'm going to talk about three blessings, and they can last you throughout your life. Immerse your mind in the Transforming Word, Volume 3. Plus, Pat's teaching, The Three Blessings. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com. Welcome back. Our next story is about Glenn Coffey Jr., a former NFL running back that decided to leave the game behind after just one season simply because he heard God tell him to. Well, years later, I caught up with Glenn to find out if he had any regrets, what he's been doing over the years, and his latest venture. Take a look. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? For Glenn Coffey Jr., it's a verse that helps explain why after just one season in the NFL, he decided to walk away. I just wasn't happy, and, and I just wasn't happy. And I knew if I wasn't getting paid that paycheck, I wouldn't be playing. Hmm. And that's when I really was like, hmm, so I guess I just won't play anymore. Two years prior, Glenn was a star running back out of the University of Alabama. There, he became a Christian with a mission to glorify God on the field. I was on fire for Christ, and so I was just, every time somebody tried to tackle me, I was like, bro, you trying to, you trying to hold me back from my ministry, so I'm about to, I'm about to punish you. I'm about to, I'm about to punish you. And that's how, I, and, and you know, I had a good season. And after that season, I was at a crossroads because it was like, stay another year at Bama or go to the NFL. I didn't want to play football anymore, so I figured if I get paid to play, I'll tolerate it. Reluctantly, Glenn entered the 2009 NFL Draft and was selected by the 49ers. He showed much promise during his rookie season as a backup to Frank Gore. But even with the money and lavish lifestyle, he wasn't happy. I told you um, I was going to tolerate paying, playing football because of the money. Having money is one thing, but when you mix fame with it, you run around doing what you want. You know, All right, I was walking around with five grand in my pocket. You know, I go to the mall, spend two, three grand, and, and maybe not even wear all the clothes or the shoes. You know, and it took me going through, I want to say, eight or nine months or so to where I was really like, dang, what, what, what am I really doing? The 49ers had big expectations for Glenn heading into the 2010 season. But during training camp, Glenn had a change of heart because he didn't like who he was becoming. I would wake up every morning with this thought on my head and I couldn't shake it. You young, you rich, and you handsome, right? And so all of a sudden, I was getting this confidence, but it wasn't coming from me or God. It was coming from the money. It was coming from me being in the NFL. And so that's when I was like, man, something got to shake because I'm changing. And I see myself changing spiritually. When you look at yourself in the mirror, what did you see? Man, a shell, a shell. Three weeks before the start of the season, Glenn couldn't shake the feeling that his life was headed in the wrong direction. So without warning, he decided to announce his retirement from the NFL. I knew then that uh, I had to make a change, and I had four years on my contract. I signed on the dollar line, and uh, it just eventually I just I just quit, man. I, and people say retire, but I got to call a spade a spade. I quit, you know. I quit on my word, on my contract, on, on, on my name, you know. Soon after his retirement, Glenn got a call from Glenn Coffey Sr., who heard the news while at work. I was at work. And one of my lawyer buddies called me, and uh, he said, man, in, uh, I'm watching CNN, and your son is announcing his retirement from the 49ers. And when he said that, I was discombobulated. I, you know, I, I thought I was going to pass out. I was, my emotions were all over the place. I was mad. I was angry. I was worried. 
it was totally uncharacteristic. I'm like, I'm like, what is going on? You know, because he didn't talk to me about it. He did not talk to me about it, right? Uh, but uh, but I'm but uh, I'm glad he didn't talk to me about it because I probably would have tried to <laughs> convince him <laughs> not, but um, not to retire. But when I heard about it, I called him. I called him, and I was like, Glenn, are you all right? And he was like, yeah, dad, I'm good. And I was like, well, I was like, what happened, man? He was like, man, dad, you know, I was in the locker room last night in the practice field, and God came and started pointing to my heart. And then all of a sudden, I felt this warm, peaceful, satisfying feeling, like I didn't have a worry in the world. Glenn stated to the media that he was retiring because he believed God had a different path for his life. Looking back, he says he probably should have handled it differently. I talked a lot about how I felt like God told me to do it, right? And I'm not saying I don't feel that way now, but when I look back, I'm like, hmm, maybe I should have did a little bit more explaining to why I felt the way I felt instead of just putting it all on him. And I put it all on him because he tells us to do that. And so I did put it on his shoulders, but I knew I was doing it out of fear too, out of fear for what people would say. You know, and I didn't want to go into depth about why I quit. Uh, and I know it's, it's easy to look back in your life and on, past, and on the past and say, I would have did this and did that. But I really would have just, on my heart, just say, I just didn't want to play football anymore, you know, and maybe just be a little bit more honest as far as my feelings instead of just putting it all on him. Glenn's initial plan after retiring was to go into ministry. But instead, he spent the next four years shuffling between speaking engagements and playing video games. The God told me to retire, and he told me to preach his word. I didn't really live up to that. I didn't. And when I quit, I, I went home and played Call of Duty for two and a half years. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and I, I, I dropped the ball. You could be 30 years old in the NFL with $10 million in the bank and be a kid. And be a kid. Uh, and that's kind of how it was for me. So when I quit the league, I had too much pride to go get a regular job a regular job, you see what I'm saying? Right, the yeah. words I'm using, right? I had too much pride to go get a job. In 2013, Glenn enlisted in the Army as an Army Ranger. After four years, the desire to play football returned. But hamstring injuries and age prevented him from being signed. Do you regret ever leaving? I, I don't regret leaving because I am who I am because I left. Mm. You know, and I felt like if I would have stayed and had a 10-year successful career, that I still would have went through everything I went through from leaving, but it just would have took longer. After much time in prayer, the Lord revealed a new path for Glenn that led him here, BDA Farm, 6,000 acres of organic farming in Alabama's Black Belt Prairie. So Glenn, when you're in here, man, what's the difference between being in here and you know, being in the football world? Uh, it's just, it's, it's calming, man. You know, the object is not to, to defeat your opponent. Well, I mean, you do have opponents. You got bugs and you got weather and stuff like that, but those opponents are, 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 are God. They're nature, they're natural. Um, and so the challenges are a lot different. You know, on a football field, you're trying to win a game. But here, and here, you're trying to not just sell a product, but you, you're trying to feed people, you know, good food, good quality food, and so, this is a whole different, you're trying to win, but in the process of winning, there's a lot of peace, there's a lot of fulfillment, and there's just a lot of, uh, it's just real, it's just, it's just real. It's, you know. You've gone from recognizing how to break down defenses to being able to tell which of these crab tomatoes are ripe yeah. <laughs> to eat. By looking at this, which, which one of these, I guess, if there is one, is, is ripe enough to eat? Um, Probably, you can eat all of them, but if you wanted to taste good, probably, probably that one right there. Right here, yeah. like this is good. Uh huh. It is good. Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. It is really good. Glenn and his father, Glenn Senior, recently released a book entitled "There's More to Life Than the Pursuit of Money," where they chronicle Glenn's journey and lessons learned. These days, he's working to establish his own organic farm one day. In the meantime, he's learning as much as he can from nature and from following the Lord. Being here has really calmed me down, and, and I'm trying to be a kid, man. I'm trying to remember that I got a daddy up there who's really like, I got you. 
You know, like I understand you think you're growing. I understand you you want to do this and do that, but if it ain't without me, then you ain't doing nothing. Wow. I remember Glenn took a lot of heat when he left the NFL because most didn't understand why he would throw away his career. He even took a lot of heat from other Christians. But at the end of the day, he did what he felt God wanted him to do. And that brought him peace. And now he's a farmer. The underlying narrative here is that God created each of us with a unique set of gifts and skills for his purpose and no one else's. Those purposes are usually things that we are passionate about. So it's our job to be honest with ourselves about what those things are and move in that direction regardless of what people think. Because chances are, God could be calling you to something bigger than you could imagine. We'll be right back after this. attorney with a passion for serving people and for excellence, Regent University needs to be high on your list. Regent's award-winning law school doesn't just create lawyers, we create leaders, judges, prosecutors and defense lawyers, civil litigators and leaders in government. My focus has been trying to really make sure we have the future leaders we need for the, the bench and the bar and for society generally. You'll learn from highly credentialed leaders who are current and former judges, distinguished scholars, and ACLJ counsel. I'm so glad I chose Regent. Uh, the relationships here have been amazing. The faculty have been amazing. Not everybody's called to the same thing when they leave law school, but they're called by a God who has a purpose for their lives, and He is going to use that education to make a difference in the world. Regent will prepare you to be a purpose-driven, practice-ready lawyer. To start your rewarding law career, complete the online application, submit your transcripts, and take the law school admissions test by July. Apply today. Well, welcome back. Hey, I want to thank you for joining us and be sure to tune in next week for more stories of faith, sports, and everything in between. And remember, life is short. Go the distance. See you next time.